If you watched my last video, you saw that um, I took a bunch of stuff that I'd uh, uh, been given, you know, basically got it for free, a bunch of model train stuff, and uh, brought some O-scale stuff down to my dad. And uh, one of the things that was also in this group of, uh, uh, you know, just it was basically two car loads full of stuff, was also some G-scale model train stuff. And uh, I'll just say it right up front, I'm going to interchangeably use the terms G-scale and G-gauge. I know they're not the same, but I'm too lazy to keep it straight in my head. So anyway, um, the one thing that I did not get with the G-scale stuff was any track. And the thing about model trains is that they're not a lot of fun without any track. Come on. Do something. Uh, because I wanted to test locomotives and kind of mess, with, mess around with it before I brought it down and gave it to my dad, I went online and I got myself some track. And I uh, got myself a big box of uh, Bachman. They call it large scale track. And this is um, this is their actually their nicer stuff. This is uh, it's a brass uh, rail material with um, molded plastic sleepers on it, and uh, this is uh, they just came out with this recently uh, as an upgrade to their steel track. This is rated for outdoor use because it's you know it's not going to rust like steel would. Now the thing about this though. Uh, Presumably, if you get a train set from Bachman or LGB, and I gotta say that this is a, a lot less expensive than LGB track. Um, if you get a train set from them, the instructions are going to show you how to connect this track together. Now, I didn't get any instructions, so I kind of had to puzzle it out. And you would think that, you know, large scale would be perfect for, you know, an albino hairless gorilla like me, but unfortunately, there's kind of a quirk with these that I didn't really anticipate, and I actually had to go online to look to see how the track goes together. Now, uh, if you've ever seen HO track, you know that it's got those little slip connectors on it. And, uh, oh, there's Cooper. Come on, Cooper. Hey, you're not being helpful. Okay. It's got the little slip connectors that hold it together. Uh, Lionel O-scale fast track just snaps together. The old school O27 um, stamp steel Lionel track is held together with those uh, pins and rust and frustration. This, on the other hand, I'm looking at this and I can't, I can't figure out just by looking at it how these things are supposed to go together. Now there's there's a um, there's a little connector on the end of here, and if you look at it. It almost looks like it's got rivets on it. And so I thought, well, does this slide together? How does this go together? And I couldn't figure it out. I actually had to go online and watch a Bachman video to see how this goes together. So I thought it would be worth making a short video about this. Now, um, here's, here's where uh, I kind of get into trouble with this. This is held together. These are actually tiny little screws. And they're Allen head screws. And they are held, uh, the screws themselves are the incredibly convenient size of uh, 5 sixty-fourths inch. And if you're like me, you probably got a junk drawer full of 5 sixty-fourths Allen wrenches. You know, you go in there and you try and find a chip clip or um, some scissors or something like that, and you got to dig through just a whole pile of these to get the thing out. But, uh, what you have to do with this is there's actually two of these on each end and they go in and these are really really tiny screws let me pull this out here and I'm going to take this and um, put it in that little tray there so I don't lose it and probably the best thing I can compare this to is if you've ever put together like an AR-15 lower the detent pins on those um, although those are spring-loaded, and when you lose control of those, they, you know, there's a flash of light, like, uh, when the Enterprise jumps to warp speed, and they disappear, and it's time to go dig out, uh, your spares box. These, on the other hand, they're not spring-loaded, but they have a very strong desire to return to hell where they came from. 
So if you drop them, they will, you know, fall into the carpet and you'll never see them again. So you got to be very careful with these. And of course, you know, they're so tiny. They're tiny, tiny little screws. So let me put these two pieces of track together here. Grab another piece of track. And I will get this screw out of here. There we go. And this is not the tricky part. The tricky part is trying to get these back in there once they've come out. And there we go. I'll put that in a little tray there. Now, once you've got those out, the two pieces of track, theoretically, slide together in those little brass clips. There we go. And you can see on there that it's got, so we get this to focus, there we go. It's got like a slot there. And Bachman says that this is so that, you know, if you're using this outside, it can accommodate, uh, you know, heating and cooling. So it's got a little bit of an expansion joint there. But uh, yeah, you gotta get that little screw back in that tiny little hole there. So let me, let me see how unsuccessfully I can do this on camera. And it really doesn't help that this particular this particular um, hex wrench has a ball end on it, which doesn't really give you any control oops, over the screw itself. It doesn't like, it's not a friction fit in there. So let me try this one more time. And we may just cut to a close up of this, depending on how well this goes. But. Try that again. Come on. Ugh. All right, well, obviously, this is not going to work for me here on camera. So, like I said, we may just do a jump cut here, and you can see what they look like once they're together. But it's a very secure method of holding these together. It's just incredibly fiddly, and I'm doing this, you know, Basically, on a workbench, I can't imagine like laying on the carpet and trying to do this. And I'm going to have to do that to connect this big circle together here so I can actually run the locomotives. But that's not something I'm going to shoot on video because nobody really wants to see me rolling around on the carpet and trying to get this thing together. So more screw over here. This is actually going better than I expected it to. Okay. Ugh. Of course I had to say that and jinx myself. One eternity later. Ah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that this is as frustrating to watch as it is. Oh, one more thing. I want to check on this uh, before I put this in here. Uh, let me get a little magnet here. Let me see if these are... They are indeed made out of steel. See that magnet attracts that pretty nicely there. So, I mean, in an outdoor environment, eventually there's going to be a problem with corrosion because of dissimilar metals. But, that's a problem for future Paul. So I suppose the, the, the hot tip here is that you take one of your 5 64th inch Allen wrenches and you run it through a, um, oh, it must be time for something. Uh, you run it through a magnetizer so that it actually holds the little screws and gives you a fighting chance to get all this stuff together. So. So there we go, uh, that's together. And like I say, it's very secure. The, the rail joints are very even there. So um, that's how you put together Bachman large scale, uh, basically G gauge track. I uh, hope this was interesting. Uh, like and subscribe. I've got a lot of different stuff on my channel. It's not all model train stuff. That's just what I happen to be into right now. 
So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.